Hey, Shin, we're doing a news report. Come on. Okay, let's start. All right, you then. Hey, stop reading. Okay, let's actually start. George Eastman was born on July 12, 1854, Waterville, New York. His father, George W. Eastman, ran a business in Rochester, New York. His father died when he was seven, two years before he moved to Rochester. He also had two sisters. George Eastman was an American interpreter who founded the Eastman Kodak Company and f helped bring the photographic use of roll film into the mainstream. Well, I don't really know what that means, but I probably shouldn't say that. Just kidding. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so... Okay, in 1880, he opened the Eastman Dry Plate and Film Company. Oh wait, I forgot to mention that my dad works at the George Eastman Museum. Yeah, cool. George Eastman was also a major philanthropist, establishing the Eastman School of Music and also establishing the Eastman Schools of Dentistry and Medicine, one at the U of R and the other one in London. He also contribu contributed to the RIT. So, yeah. Yeah, we're all done. That's all, folks. folks. Wait, are we even legally allowed to say that? Um, okay, let's run. The cops are coming. Wake up, wake up. My project is on Sand Patch. And my project is on the Rochester Jeffersons. The rot, rot, we're Rochester's first football team. Many of you may not know that Rochester had a professional football team, the Rochester Jeffersons. The Jeffersons were started by a group of teenagers in the 1890s. One report had them being started in 1898. They were called the Jeffersons or the Jeffs because they played on Jefferson Avenue in Rochester. One teenager named Leo Lyons was a player who joined the team in 1908, but soon started to manage and run the team full time. He was even the head coach for one year. The Jeffersons were one of the teams that originally became the NFL. They started as a sandlot team, then they became a semi-pro team, and eventually became a pro team in 1920, playing in the American Professional Football Association, which would become the NFL in 1922. They played against teams that still exist, like the Green Bay Packers and the New York Giants. They also played against other teams that are no longer around, like the Akron Pros and the Columbus Panhandles. The Jeffersons won the New York State Championship in 1916. The record was three wins, one loss, and three ties. In 1920, their first year in the American Professional Football Association, they won six games, lost three, and tied two. They came in seventh place. In 1922, their first year in the NFL, they won zero games, lost four, and tied one. They came in 17th place. That's all I got for you folks. Now it's Sam's turn. Sam Patch was a pro jump for years, entertainment for people. Some people say he jumped into his mother's hands. Sam Patch was a daredevil. He lived in Pawtucket, Rhode Island. Sam worked at a cotton mill. On November 6th, Sam took his pet bear and fox and jumped with them. Sam wanted to make a bigger jump, so he built a 20-foot platform at the top of High Falls. Sam died when he hit the water. A farmer found Sam's body when he was cracking the ice to get water for his horse. Some people say that on twilight, on November 13, if you look out over the Genesee Falls, you can see a figure with a black handkerchief around the waist posed on a rock ready to jump. That's it for you, folks. folks now. Peace. Peace. <laughs> wake up we're doing the news report hi my name is Aurora my name is Sophie and my name is Hyland we are going to tell you about the three four most recent principles our current principal is Dr. Rio Dart, Dr. Rio brought Dart and R2D to the hamsters and Charlie the therapy dog to Frez Mr. Como the principal before Dr. Rio started the fun yearly teacher talent show Dr. Hall was principal when Frez won the Blue Ribbon Award. And before Dr. Hall was Mr. Schaffheimer, who introduced the Frez Pool to Frez. Over the past few weeks, we have, been, we have interviewed teachers around Frez. The first teacher we interviewed was Mrs. Willis. 
Mrs. Willis has been working at Fres for 19 years, and her favorite thing about Fres is the students and their families. The second teacher we interviewed was Miss Luckenby, and Miss Luckenby has been working at Fres for 18 years, and her favorite thing about Fres is working with and teaching children. We also interviewed Miss French, and she has been working at Fres for 31 years. Wow, that's a lot. Lastly, we interviewed Mr. Salerno, one of the three gym teachers here at Fres. He has been working at Fres for 22 years. His favorite thing about Fres is working with kids all day long. That brings a conclusion to our report. Thanks for watching. Nathaniel Rochester was born on February 21st, 1752 and died May 1831. Wow, he lived a very long time. Did you know on, Exil on Alexander Street, there was a statue of Nathaniel Rochester sitting on a bench? When he first enrolled in the Army, he quickly reached the rank of Major, but one day suffered from a physical breakdown and was forced to retire. But he came back into the Army and reached the rank of Colonel before retiring one last time. In 1800, he purchased 100 acres of land by the Genesee River for a measly cost of $1,750. Hey Nate, why don't you hit them with one, a fun fact? All right. Did you know that Nathaniel's house is now kept in the Genesee Country and Village Museum? And in 1788, he married the lovely Miss, soon to be Mrs. Sophia Betty. All right, enough with me. Why don't you give him one deck? Okay, did you know that Nathaniel served a committee to persuade the government to build the Erie Canal? Also, he, surprise, surprise, was the founder of Rochester. That's all, folks. That's a wrap. Hi, I'm Nathan. I'm going to tell you about the history of Mount Dope Cemetery. Between 1832 and 1834, Rochester saw a significant cholera outbreak. Reportedly, 110 people in the city of roughly 10,000 at the time were affected and died. This outbreak caused a sudden need for more burial space and was one of the most significant factors in the opening of Mount Hope Cemetery. Initially, the cemetery was located a, mi a mile and a quarter beyond the city limits. Since then, the city property line has expanded a tour to include it. Beyond the need for more burial space, the cemetery was also built to function as a public attraction. Rochester, one of America's first boom towns, was at the heart of the Industrial Revolution. As the population rapidly expanded at the rate of nearly 300 people per day, in the early 1830s, the city of Rochester built Mount Hope Cemetery to enhance the quality of life for people who settled there. The site became one of the first public park-like cemeteries in the United States, and people and families often visited for luxurious time and activities. To enhance the cemetery's appeal as a public attraction, the graveyard was purposely built on a challenging landscape formed by glaciers during, during the last age, ice age. The location features hills, valleys, swamps, and heavily wooded areas. The cemetery itself is modeled after Mount Aburn Cemetery, a 170-acre graveyard in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Today, Mount Hope Cemetery continues to serve as more than just an interment site. It's precious green space and in urban area that's been overtaken by concrete. Most Rochesterians know that historical figures Susan B. Anthony and Frederick Douglass are buried at storied Mount Hope. However, they are just two of many notable people who have been laid to rest at the cemetery. For example, Ida Jane Anderson was a nurse at Rochester General Hospital where it was located on West Main Street. Henderson, Anderson was a forward-thinking woman who was concerned with, with standardizing nursing practices. In 1903, she was appointed to a commission set up by the government, 
governor of New York State to end the five licensing requirements for registered nurses. As a result, Henderson was issued the first nursing license in New York State. Similarly, progressive public health nurse Lillian Wald is also buried at Mount Hope. Wald has, was a contemporary of Jane Addams, who ran the Henry Street Settlement in New York City, which provided services to new immigrants and the poor. When the flu epidemic struck in 1918, Walt developed the concept of public health nursing and coined the term. Thank you for listening.